Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Gamecock Central Radio, Black Friday edition of the GCR podcast. Emerson Phillips with Wes Mitchell getting ready for Carolina Clemson tomorrow, 735 kickoff up at Memorial Stadium in Tigertown. Wes, how was your Thanksgiving? I'm I'm excited for the game, Emerson. You know, uh, we, we, I think, sort of look forward to this one all year long. And, uh, you know, stuffed my face with some uh, Thanksgiving food on Thursday and uh, then ready for the big game on Saturday. So, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of been interesting. I, I don't get the feeling uh, there's been a whole lot of, of trash talk, uh, at least just from what I've seen, uh, you know, sort of um, my own observations on Facebook, Twitter, or stuff like that. There's always a little bit of trash talk, but it, it's kind of strange. South Carolina, um, such a big underdog in this game. Um, and, and it's not that they've, you know, generally you, you would see that number and think, well, you know, South Carolina fans are probably very unhappy or they've had a bad year or something like that. But it's kind of a strange, um, I guess, tone to the rivalry game this year, Emerson, in that it's like, uh, you know, the fans obviously at South Carolina would, would love to, to pull this upset. But at the same time, you know, I, I think fans are already – pretty happy with the fact that Carolina's got six wins and is going to go to a bowl game. Yeah, feels like the Gamecocks are playing with house money here, no question about that. South Carolina with nothing to lose and all the pressure feels like it's on Clemson West. They're headed to the ACC championship game, but clearly they have to beat South Carolina to keep their college football playoff hopes alive. Obviously, Clemson National runner-up a year ago, and they're looking to get back. And you know, If they went out, we have to believe that the, the Tigers will be in the college football playoff. So, a huge game for them tomorrow night. And Brent Venables, the Clemson defensive coordinator, has sort of downplayed pressure on Clemson. He said that the pressure is equal on both teams, but I think he may be the only one that believes that, if, in fact, he believes it, Wes. You know, he said that uh, this week that, you know, pressure is equal on both teams, but you don't have to be a college football expert to see that, uh, you know, big stakes for Clemson in this game tomorrow night. Yeah, absolutely it is. And I, I think, um, you know, to me, I'll be curious to see how the first um, – the first handful of drives sort of um, play out and how they have an effect on this game because, you know, this is the type of game where if South Carolina sort of hangs around early, then I, I think you do see that pressure mount. Now, uh, you know, the other side of that is that Clemson has so much firepower. They are at home. Uh, it is a night game. You know, th- these fans are going to be real jazzed up. So, you know, I think it's one of those things where, if Carolina starts slow or has a big mistake early on, it really could potentially uh, snowball on them and, and them not have a chance. But, you know, if they can just sort of survive the, the first quarter, the first part of the first quarter, and just get into the flow of this game, then, you know, I, I think that's what, uh, you know, that, that's what's going to have to happen early on. You know, this is going to be one of those things where South Carolina sort of has to uh, just hang in there, uh, you know, maybe win a quarter. Um, but just hang in there otherwise and then uh, hope to make some play at the end because, you know, I, I think obviously by by the, the size of that line, uh, you know, Clemson does have the firepower to potentially blow South Carolina out. But, um, you know, South Carolina for the most part has, has just found a way to hang in the games this year too. Clemson holding fast as a 24-point favorite going into this game with the Gamecocks tomorrow night up in Tigertown. Emerson Phillips and Wes Mitchell with you here on Gamecock Central Radio. We invite you to download the Gamecock Central Radio app. It's on the App Store and on Google Play. You can listen to our podcast for free on your cell phone, anywhere you receive cell phone service. To subscribe to our podcast, search for Gamecock Central Radio on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other popular services, or visit radio.gamecockcentral.com. Wes, the Gamecocks, with the exception of a few dropped punts this year, two or three of them, the Gamecocks have done a good job of avoiding key turnovers, and they've not made the critical mistake in terms of turning the football all over uh, that you talked about just a moment ago. In fact, I saw earlier this week that only three programs in major college football, three teams have thrown fewer interceptions than South Carolina. The Gamecocks have thrown just four picks all year. And I know they're not throwing the football a tremendously high number of times per game, West, This has been a run-heavy offense this year. Rico Dowdle and A.J. Turner and David Williams have done a good job you know, taking pressure off of Jake Bentley in particular since Bentley took over as a starting quarterback in the midway portion of the year. But you know, the Gamecocks have done a good job protecting the football ball this year and if they can do that tomorrow night they may have a chance to beat Clemson yeah you know they'll have to continue to do that obviously and I think on the other side South Carolina's gonna have to continue to to turn their opponent over you know Clemson is an offense that I fully expect um, will probably go up and down the field at times you know they're going to 
they're going to put up yardage. Uh, they got too many weapons. They're too, uh, they're just too, um, sort of honed in on what they do to, to just stop them. You know, they, they know what they want to do offensively and they go execute it and they, they spread the ball around to their playmakers. So, you know, inside the twenties, Clemson is going to have a lot of success, I think. Now, you know, if you're South Carolina, you've got to force still goals. You've got to force a few turnovers. Uh, Clemson has turned the football over this year. Um, you know, in the games that have been close uh, for them, and, uh, you know, the loss to Pitt, they turned the football over in the red zone. And that's something that South Carolina defense, you know, and I often say you can't you can't really count on turnovers. You know, they're hard to predict. Um, you know, there, it's something that sometimes they come, sometimes they don't. But at the same time, uh, you know, you're talking about a South Carolina team when you say they have consistently – uh, been opportunistic and created turnovers. Uh, by this point in the season, you have to sort of say there's something to that trend. Um, you know, there's something they're doing uh, to at least uh, partially cause that to happen. And when they get opportunities to make turnovers, they're taking advantage of them. So I I think that is a massive key to this game. You know, you look at, uh, to me, if I look at this game the last, uh, you know, the last almost decade, if I go back to the to the five-game winning streak for South Carolina, and then I look at the two-game winning streak for Clemson right now, uh, there's two things that stand out to me. The team that has turned the ball over has lost the game, uh, and the team that the team that has been best with their defensive front and gotten pressure on the quarterback is the team that, is, that has won the game. So, uh, you know, I, I think you look at all, about all seven of those games, you know, it was turnovers and pressure from the front four. So, I think, again, you look on paper, South Carolina's probably not going to be the team that wins that battle up front. Um, their offensive line is going to have to give them a chance. But uh, the, the great equalizer in a lot of these games, and the, the actually um, the equalizer last year, it wasn't, it wasn't really that Clemson you know, won the turnover battle to win the game, but Clemson was a far better team than South Carolina last year, and South Carolina winning the turnover battle sort of allowed them to stay in the game last year. So I think something like that would have to happen again this year. The 114th meeting between South Carolina and Clemson on the gridiron. Clemson's won the last two in the series. Prior to that, the Gamecocks won five straight, but the Gamecocks have won seven of the last ten in this series. Of course, that'll have no bearing on tomorrow night's action. Wes, uh, you talked about Clemson, you know, figuring to have success between the 20s. And if that's the case, and you have to believe that it will be, Clemson's been so good offensively this year. You know, I maintain that they're the best offensive team in the country with Deshaun Watson. And, you know, particularly if they get that running game cranked back up again, they're going to be tough to slow down. But Muschamp said earlier this week that, you know, you're not going to stop Clemson. You're not going to shut them down. You just have to try to execute the defense. And uh, red zone defense will be critical, Wes. And that's an area where the Gamecocks have excelled this year. South Carolina, fifth in the SEC and red zone defense, but 10th in the nation in red zone D. So we figured the Gamecocks probably going to give up some yards, but if they can hold Clemson to some field goals in the red zone, again, that would improve South Carolina's chances. Yeah, I think you have to um, you have to sort of be able to keep things in front of you. You know, this is the Clemson offense that uh, as much as they like this sort of uh, shorter passing game too, as much as they like to get their playmakers the ball in space, um, they're going to take a bunch of shot plays too. Uh, you know that Mike Mike Williams um, actually just the the way the way he can attack the football in the air, um, you know, rem- reminds me a lot of Alshon Jeffrey. You know, he's not he's a little bit different body type than Alshon, but as far as the fact that Mike Williams is open even when he's covered, so to speak, uh, you know, the idea of well, if if Alshon Jeffrey's one on one, you're going to just throw the football up to him. Uh, they sort of look at Mike Williams the same way as South Carolina did Alshon Jeffrey when he was here. So, you know, I, I think you look at that and you say uh, to, to even have a chance to sort of force those field goals or turnovers in the red zone, you have to be able to keep the ball in front of you uh, inside the twenty. So, you know, they're they're going to have they're going to have their good plays, they're going to have their explosive plays, but you have to sort of limit those to you know even their big plays need to be ten, twelve. 15 yards as opposed to the 50 yard strike that you can, you know, that you can do nothing about. So I, I think that keeping the ball in front, uh, not missing tackles on the perimeter, uh, just it, to me, it, it comes down to the fact of you have to make Clemson earn it. You know, if you give them, if you give them yardage, give them big plays, 
then you you just don't have a shot because they're going to get they're going to hit their yardage even if you don't get them. So, Wes, I know you've been watching the Clemson offense on film some this week. What do you see that you like about Clemson? What kind of problems do they present to Gamecocks, and what are the Gamecocks going to be able to do to try to slow down this high powered offense and give Carolina a chance to win the game? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, the, the obvious thing you see is just they they have so many different ways to attack you, but um, you know they they like to run the zone read, but they like to sort of attach the little bubble screen to it to where, you know, they'll they'll fake to the running back or, or they'll read that, that defensive end and choose to either hand it to the running back or Watson will flip the ball out on, on the bubble screen, which, uh, you know, is, is a way to keep him from getting hit, uh, you know, like he would in the traditional, uh, you know, zone read. Then, of course, they actually, I think it's because uh, Watson does have a quick release. He does have good arm strength. They'll, they'll run the quick outs. Um, a pretty good bit you know that's that's a route you know you see these teams use the screen game a lot um to the outside but the, the quick out uh, almost seems like a forgotten art uh, a lot of places but he'll run the quick out or the double quick out and as as quick as his release is and as good as his arm strength is he can just sort of flick it out there and it's a, it's an easy completion underneath to you know to their slot guys and you know i think then you throw in like i said mike williams um anytime they they want it. They feel like they can throw the ball down the field. Uh, Wayne Gallman's sort of a traditional uh, downhill runner, although they, to me, they that's been maybe their one weakness this year. They haven't been able to get the running game as much as going as much as you might think. But to me, that's not because of Gallman. Gallman is about that. There aren't many better in the country than Wayne Gallman. Um, and uh, then I think the, the forgotten guy is always uh, Jordan Leggett. You know he. If you cover everybody else, they'll they'll go they'll go to him, and he's normally open. And I, I think ultimately the thing the thing that Deshaun Watson does better than anybody I think is on is on money downs, on third downs, on fourth downs. Uh, this guy almost it, it kind of uh, again to sort of bring it to to Carolina. Uh, not not that they're quite similar players, but. The way that Connor Shaw had a knack for just breaking a defense's heart on third downs uh, by getting just enough yardage, uh, Deshaun Watson just has a knack of when when he's really needed to make a play, he'll extend it out um, and let his receivers get open, and then you know just make a play. So th- this team, I mean, I, I don't want to build them up to be, I don't know, the greatest show on turf. You know, the the St. Louis Rams back. Uh, Back when they were the best uh, offense in football, but uh, this, this this Clemson offense is definitely as good as advertised. I think Deshaun Watson was the favorite to win the Heisman coming into the season, but he's not going to win the Heisman this year. In fact, he's thrown thirteen interceptions, that's second most in the country. So turnovers have been the one shortcoming of the Clemson offense this year, Wes. And I've been interested to see if the Tigers are going to clean up their act offensively and not turn the football over. If they play a mistake-free game offensively for sixty minutes. I think they can play with anybody in the country, but they haven't done that yet, Wes, so it'll be interesting to see you know, if Clemson continues to play this turnover type of football that they've done. They had five turnovers in the narrow victory over NC State. Watson threw three picks in the Pitt game a couple of weeks ago. He threw for an ACC record 580 yards in that ball game, but Pitt beat him. Uh, due in large part to the turnover. So, Wes, you look at the Clemson offense, and we could go on and on about them, but nobody's covered Mike Williams all year. Jordan Leggett is a matchup nightmare. Clemson's got Deion Kane at wideout. Artavis Scott's always a threat. Hunter Renfro, I think, is one of the best stories in college football. This kid is a former walk-on who played at Socastee High School. He was a quarterback in high school, very much a running quarterback, and uh, had an offer from Coastal Carolina. Didn't have any major college offers, and he passed up a full ride to Coastal to walk on at Clemson, and all he did was catch two touchdown passes in the national championship game a year ago. So Clemson loaded offensively, Wes, and you know, the Gamecocks clearly have got their work cut out for them. Give us a recipe for Gamecock victory tomorrow night, Wes. <laughs> uh, well, um, you know, they, if, if Clemson's going to put the ball on the ground or, or put the ball in danger, South Carolina has to take advantage. Uh, you know, what, also, I, I thought one thing that Pitt did a, uh, a really good job of in that win was – sort of keeping Clemson's defensive line off balance. Um, now, obviously, I, I'm not I, – I know coaches, uh, Coach Steve, blah, 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 take every game the same. Uh, you put as much emphasis on Western Carolina as you do Clemson, blah, 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 blah. But I, if I'm South Carolina's coaching staff, um, I maybe didn't even let on to the players, but 
I was already installing wrinkles last week for this game, you know, because um, uh, you you can install new offensive plays and just not call them. Uh, obviously, last week against Western Carolina, so it, I'm speaking on what I would have done because I think you have to. You can't just line up straight up against this Clemson. As, as much as we talk about their offense, their front seven is really good as well. And South Carolina has struggled against uh, great pass rush teams. And I, I think Clemson's a really, really good pass rush team. So, you know, I, I think Pitt, Pitt actually just used the uh, the shovel pass, um, which is something, uh, you know, that you don't really – you see it, but you don't see it a ton. They used it all game long. And what they use it, they use it underneath their, their, you know, other outside runs and stuff. And when Clemson's defensive line would get upfield, um, you basically flip it down to a, you know, to a fullback or to an H back. And if Clemson's defensive line had gotten too far upfield, then he's got a crease. And that sort of worked to, uh, to sort of slow down their pass rush a little bit. So I, I think South Carolina's going to have to be creative offensively. Um, this is not a game you're just going to be able to take the air out of the ball and hope to hang around. They're too good offensively. Uh, I think South Carolina's going to have to be aggressive, um, have some some plays early. I I would go I would go ahead and go deep off of that the screen game. You know, South Carolina runs the screen game so much. I'd go ahead and you know the play that to, to Casey Crosby against Tennessee, um, where you fake the screen and go over the top. Um, any of those variations off of that, because Clemson's going to sit on the outside screen stuff. They're going to sit on the inside zone. They'll be ready for, um, you know, the the pull, pin and pull sweep that South Carolina loves to use. So uh, all the staples Clemson's going to sit on. I, if I'm South Carolina, I think they need some wrinkles on offense. And you know, if they can, if they can sort of do that to slow that rush, uh, Jake Bentley will have a shot to put up some numbers against his team. Because I think Clemson's secondary. Uh, it's probably uh, the weak point of this uh, of this team, and especially that defense. And South Carolina's got some receivers that can get open. So uh, whether South Carolina can have success offensively, to me, is going to depend on can they can they give Jake Bentley a little bit of room to sit back there and operate. All right, we got a 7:35 kick tomorrow night up in Tiger Town. Should be a pretty well lubricated crowd for this night game tomorrow <laughs> night. West, a uh, very interesting couple of days of college football here. I don't know how much you kept up with it yesterday, Thanksgiving Day, but reports came out last night that Tom Herman was close to signing to become LSU's head coach. But today, here on Black Friday, it's being reported that Herman is still in the running for the Texas job, and all this with Houston getting ready to play Memphis today. Uh, and Texas plays today as well. Charlie Strong and much in battle at this point. Uh, you know, there's talk that if Herman goes to LSU, Strong could get another year at Texas. But, you know, we're also hearing that uh, that Herman could end up at Texas as well. So Charlie Strong kind of hanging in the wind right now and a lot fixing to go down on the coaching carousel, Wes, and that'll start turning any minute now. Yeah, it's, uh, I know one thing is for certain is that uh... – Tom Herman holds all the cards right now. So, uh, you know, I, I, these, these agents, man, they are, uh, they can, they are very, very good at what they're, they do. Um, and they, they know how to, they know how to raise the, uh, raise the bar, I guess, for, for lack of a better word. So, uh, you know, I, I think that I'm not, I'm not saying the LSU Herman talk is wrong. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure that, that came from, from good places. But at the same time, if you know, if, if you're Tom Herman and you're Tom Herman's agent, namely, and you're wanting to get your guy as much money as possible, uh, you know, a bidding war between LSU and Texas uh, is probably uh, about the best position any college coach can ever be in. Hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I I wonder if potentially that that's what we have going on here is that Herman Herman's guy is just driving up the price right now, and now. Um, you know, you look and you say, "Well, uh, you've got you got Houston still sitting here trying to raise more money um, or raise the bar to, to meet what they what they're probably going to have to yep. uh, sort of meet or match." And then you've got LSU, you got Texas. Who, who wants my guy more? Um, now, at the same time, that that might lead to a couple, you know, million dollars a year more potentially. But um, if you want to look at this thing from a long standing view you know look really deep into this thing 
you're you're only you're actually only driving up the expectation for Tom Herman as well because if if Herman is the highest paid coach in in America after this, then whoever gets him is going to be expecting a lot very, very quickly. No doubt about that. He certainly got returns at Houston, and we could have movement on the Tom Herman front uh, literally this afternoon as we record here on Black Friday. So, Wes, a good chat today. Huge weekend of college football. All the rivalry games, a number of them today. North Carolina and NC State play today. We got Arkansas, Missouri today. Texas and TCU. Washington, Washington State this weekend. We got Georgia, Georgia Tech, Florida, Florida State, and of course Carolina Clemson tomorrow night, and a host of other rivalry games. So it really is a fun time of year for college football. Wes, we appreciate the update today. Have a great weekend. All right, you too, man. Appreciate it. All right, he's Wes Mitchell. I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for joining us.